Hello and welcome to the session on programming Python. This is lesson number six and this is part of the IGCSE computer science series of videos on programming in Python for the 2021 syllabus. Now what we are going to be having a look at here today is how we can use DEF in Python. Now inside our lesson objectives here we're talking about how we can identify the difference between functions and procedures in Python. Now, when we look at these in pseudocode, function is its own function, it's its own capitalized word, as is procedure. But when we look at a Python script, def could be a function or a procedure, and it's very, very difficult to see the difference in the beginning. Now, typically, the way this has been defined at IGCSE is if we are using the return function or returning data to let's say a data structure or a variable, this would be classified as a function. But if we're not returning data to, let's say, a variable or a data structure, or if we're just asking a user to enter the values one, two, three, and if we're not storing that answer and it's just indicating what action happens next, we would classify this as a procedure. Now, there are way more in-depth kind of instructions on how to use procedures and functions correctly in IGCSE computer science, but hopefully this gives you a basic understanding of the difference between both function and procedure and how you can identify that in Python. Now, the other things which we're gonna be looking at today is how we can pass a parameter between a function and procedure, and for now, passing parameters may be quite a new concept for you, so hopefully clear by the end of this video. We're going to be having a look at how we can create a menu-driven program which gives us the option, hey, do you want to choose from options? One, two, three, four. And also, we're going to be having a look at how we can globalize variables, constants, and also data structures, and why we would need to globalize a data structure, variable, or a constant. Now, moving on to this first part of the lesson here, and by the time you look at these slides, there should be a nice video sitting here on the left hand side to you, which is this video. We are going to have a look at how we can set up a calculator in Python. So number one, we want the calculator to have a menu driven functionality. So would you like to do an addition question or subtraction or multiplication and so on? We need to offer the user an option if they want to quit the program and also to output the contents of any of the equations or any equations inside a list. Now, as always, you've got a link to my functions and procedures a REPL file. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to walk you through how, let's say, functions and procedures work at IGCSE and how you can get started. So, first of all, running this, we have created a display menu, def display menu. And inside here, we have globalized name. The reason why name is being globalized is because we want to use this variable in another one of our functions or procedures later on. We have set the name or name as equal to Harry. And then what we are going to do is we're going to ask the user to choose from one of the options which we can see here. So do we want to add a name, display a list, or quit the program? Now on line number 13, we've got option is integer input, enter your choice. And what we're being asked to do is enter a value over here. So I could enter one, or two, or three. Now, the great thing about this program currently is that we are validating the input. We're saying while the option is not in the range one to four, tell them that they have entered an invalid choice. So let's be an idiot, right? Let's enter an invalid option, five. Invalid choice, six. Invalid choice, three. And it's been validated. Now that it's been validated, what we will be able to do, and we can see that free is quit, okay? That's why it's ending. We can press end to enter. Oh, let's press end in the correct space, so inside our console window, and we can see that the program is no longer running. 
Now let's run that again and have a look at what options one and two do. Now I'm going to undo uh, whatever I deleted over here and just rerun this. So do we want to add a name, display a list or quit the program? We want to add a name. And let's have a look at this next section of code and we'll come back to this return section in a minute. So function as value being returned. So we've got def add name. So this here is our second function or is it a procedure that we have set up here, right? We'll, dis we'll discuss that in a second. So we've got print enter the name to be added to the list. New name is input. Okay, so enter a name. So I'm going to write here, Bob, okay? So now that I have entered Bob, okay? It says enter the position in the list to insert the name. Choose the numbers one to 10. Now we've got index 11. We've got while not in index range 10. Print, enter a position. So I'm gonna enter, let's say five over here. Index is integer input. If index is in range 10, name index is new name. So this should put it into position five within that list. Press enter. And now let's see if we display our list, has my name been added? Let's see. Now currently we have got Bob, who is position six in the list. So it looks like that this is working. And there's my reminder for another meeting. We can ignore that for now. Let's enter another name here and let's enter Rob. And we want to go in position one, display list. And now we have two pieces of data. Now, it's really, really important to identify and remember here, but remember Python lists start at zero here. So this is why the numbering may be a little bit off at the moment. But hopefully you're gonna be able to see how we've got these two different def functions working. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look at the rest of the code inside this program. So this is how we display the names for index in range 10. So it's going to allow us to display 10 pieces of data which are inside our list. We're doing print index plus one, names and index each time, so we're already familiar with how lists work. And then we're doing names is equal to speech marks 10. Now, this concept is going to be quite new for you. And the reason why it is new is because typically when we set up lists before or when we have set up lists in the past, or if you're not one of my students, this is how we have set up lists in the past. We could have something like first names is equal empty list. And instead of doing that, what we're doing by the multiply 10 here is we're saying that this list names is going to store 10 different characters or there's going to be 10 different pieces of data we put into this list. And what it's going to do here is it's going to create an empty list with speech marks in each position. Now, just so you can see how this works here, what I would like to do is I would like to enter another choice over here so we can test this. One, center A, and we can see this is erroring now. If I type in print, names, what we're going to be able to see here is this placeholder of a speech mark. So we've got a list which has 10 pieces of data and these speech marks are just placeholders. We can see Rob and Bob has been inserted from when we added it earlier on in our program. So this is how we can predefine a list and use a placeholder value. And lastly, we're going to have a look at this while loop. So how is it that we're running this program. So how is it we are calling each of these programs here? So display menu, add name, and also display names. Now let's have a look at what happens at the beginning of the program. We've got, do you want to add a name, display a list, or do you want to quit the program? So where is that information coming from? Now, in order for us to see that, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to search for display, and then I'm going to type in menu. And what we'll be able to see within this while loop is 
We've got a while loop here and we've got choice is equal to display menu. So this is how we are calling our first function here, display menu. In order to get a program to run, which is using def, which could be functional procedure, we must call it by its function. When we enter option number one up here, it calls def add name. Two is display names. We call each of the functions. And then it loads that menu. Probably the simplest way to explain it for now. So, hoping that this is kind of at least, I guess, 50% clear for you and you understand what I have partially explained about def, functions, and also procedures. Now, what you are going to be doing here now is you are going to be using the information from this program here and you are going to be setting up a program which allows us to do some maths. Now, I'm going to help you get started very, very quickly. So let's go to create new REPL and we're going to call this maths program and create a REPL. Now, what we need to do here is we firstly need to create a def functional procedure. Okay, so I'm going to say def and I'm going to call this menu colon at the end and we're going to say print and we're going to say um, one and we're going to say addition. Okay, if we go back over here and if we look at the previous slide on how we set up our last menu, we can then have option two, can be a print statement, no problem at all. And we can have print and we're going to have two and subtraction. And then what we're also going to need here is we're going to need to have a question. So what option do you want to choose from? So we can have option, make sure this is camel casing. And we're going to say mine isn't, make sure yours is. Int, input, and we're going to have what option do you want to choose? Okay, can't spell. Okay, now once we have asked them which option they want to choose, we're going to need to validate their choices. So you can take that while loop. But the most important thing is this display menu here. We want to be able to make sure that this runs. So we are going to type display, Ooh, mine is called just menu, so just menu brackets and run. And this is how we run the program. Now, this will probably take you the first part of the lesson. If you are not one of my students and you want access to this task or these slides, do drop me a message underneath this video and then we will explore the other concepts shortly. Now, for the next part of this lesson, what we're going to be doing is having a look at how we can use parameters within DEF and also how we can use globalised variables. Now, before we get started talking about parameters and also variable globalisation, what globalisation or globalising variables and parameters allow us to do is basically pass different pieces of data between different functions and procedures which we have created here. So in this last example, we had a look at display menu, we globalized variable name, and then down here later on in add name, we were referring to print and name. And in order for this to work, this has to be globalized from the very beginning because we're trying to use a variable outside of display menu and inside another function here. Now, a parameter which we are also using here is something which is called names. So let's have a look at where names appears outside of the function add name. So this piece of data or variable, we're using this outside of add name, we're also using it in display names. But notice it's not globalized. We're passing it as a parameter and a piece of data which belongs to that parameter between two different functions which have been set up here. So this is globalization for variables and this is passing a parameter. They pretty much do the same thing. Now, we're going to come back to this program in a minute and have a look exactly at 
how this is working. But before we look at that, I'm going to demonstrate and introduce you to a simple password program where we are only using a parameter. Now, what we have is a program which is using or called get password. And when we run it, it's asking a user to set up a new password. The length of a password needs, needs to be between uh, five and eight characters, something like that. We can read the logic here. And then when we set the password, let's say Harry123, and then Bob123, the passwords don't match, so this is gonna be rejected. And it's gonna say that the passwords don't match. Try to enter a new password, 123456, 123456. Oh, they don't match still. And last attempt, it's just basically asking us to set the password and then verify it. Now, the parameter which we are using here is called attempt. We're using it inside our program here. And when we are calling the get password function here, it's asking us to call the function twice and making sure that our password which we are setting is the same each time once we have called the function. Each time we are calling the function on line 16, 17, 20, 21, if they don't match, it's checking the length of the password, is it less than five, is it greater than eight, if it is, error, but it's allowing us to call the function twice. And it's allowing us to set a password, making sure the password matches this criteria, but notice that there is no globalized variable here. Now, each time we do this, we are returning get p-word. Now, hopefully you're able to see here and understand the very basics of setting a parameter and why we might do this instead of globalizing a variable here. And hopefully you'll be able to see it's allowing us to call get p-word twice here to set a password. If we wanted this to happen three times, we could simply add another line, have password free, get password free, and also inside this while loop, we would be able to have get password free, and then we can add another condition, which would be while password is not equal to password two, and not equal to password three, and that would allow us to then set a password once, two times, three times, and if any of those didn't match, it would keep asking us the same thing again and again. Now, this here would be an example of a function because we are returning a password. Now, moving back over to this last program here, what we'll be able to see, as I said before, is an example of variable globalization and also parameter. And what we can see here that names is actually the empty list which we discussed in the first part of this video here. And this is going to be our empty array with a placeholder speech marks. And we can see here it's being passed from outside of the program it's set. It's just a local identifier or a data structure here and we're passing this into display names and also passing it into add name. Now, hopefully by this point in the lesson, you're able to understand how and why we use def and how to set up a basic calculator, how to pass a global variable and also how to use a parameter.